Welcome to this lesson on our basic process for editing landscape photos. In future lessons, Sam, Will, and I will go over our own photos and just go over some more creative things that we do, but we just wanted to give a basic process that can get you started. The first thing is to start with a photo that you love, and we recommend trying to get your photos as close to final as possible while shooting. Editing is a great tool to make our photos look even better, but we have to start out with a photo that we love. Here's one of Will's photos that he really likes. It was one of his big negative space photos. And with most landscape photography, there are a few basic things that can make your photos better. One is that the landscape is generally too dark. The skies are generally too bright. And so we're going to be doing some things to combat that. Our first thing that we actually do is to crop our photo so that we know what we're working with. If we don't crop our photo and we end up editing a photo based off of the entire thing, there might be things that we're thinking about that don't matter in the end. Suppose we crop this cloud out in the bottom right, but if we didn't do that until the end, we might be paying attention to how that cloud looks. So the first thing to do is crop your photo. I actually like how this photo is taken, but for the sake of cropping, let's edit this to a 16 by nine photo, which would be perfect for a desktop screensaver. I'll zoom in just a little bit, just to get a little closer to that land. I don't need that much sky, something like there. Then just press done. The next thing I'm working on is the exposure and the white balance. The white balance looks pretty good right now, let me just play around and see what happens if I do boost the warmth. It actually kind of gives it a really cool effect. This shot was shot during the evening. We might use some graduated filters to actually make this a little bit better, but that's something we'll learn about in a future lesson. I like how I boosted it just a little bit with the warmth. With the exposure, it does seem a little bit dark to me. So I can either just boost the entire exposure like this, but when I do that, the sky gets really bright. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna use these sliders down here. I'm gonna bring up the shadows to try to bring up the darkness in the land. If that doesn't work completely, I'm gonna bring up the blacks too, just a little bit. If you really bring up the blacks though, you start to get this very faded look, which can be a cool style, but I don't really like that for my landscapes. So I'll just bring that up a little bit. Definitely bring up my shadows though. And then with my highlights, I'm gonna drop down my highlights and my whites just a little bit. One thing to be paying attention to is our histogram. We don't want anything to be clipping in the blacks or in the highlights. We can actually show those by clicking on or off these little triangles and then if we're editing something and we actually get to something into the blacks, we see that in our photos rather than just hovering over this little triangle up there like we learned about before, we can actually click it on so that it's always going to show if we are clipping anything. We don't wanna clip anything. We wanna make sure that our entire image has some sort of information unless you're going for like a silhouette look or something that's really overexposed. The next set of tools I like to use are the clarity, vibrance, and saturation sliders. Typically for landscapes, I'll boost the clarity just a bit. This increases the definition of the land. With the clarity slider, if you're shooting portraits, photos of people, this can look a little weird, but with landscapes, it actually looks pretty good. Same thing with vibrance and saturation. We learned in the last lesson that saturation might not look that good, for people, but with landscapes, it can look pretty cool. If we go too far though, we get a little bit too much color in the sky. That might be something that you like, but I'm not actually going to do it that much. And let's just see with Vibrance what that does. It looks pretty cool. I'm starting to like this photo even better, and it's always good to check your before and after work while you're editing. Pressing the backslash button can see the before and after. You can see what it looks like. I'm definitely giving it a style with the warmth that I added. If I wanna back off that a little bit, I can. If you don't know where you started, you can always click this button that says custom right now and 
change it back to as shot, which is pretty close to where I was. I'm gonna skip the tone curve for now because they've already made my adjustments to exposure. If I wanna add a little bit more contrast, I might come in here and add just a subtle S curve like that. That brings down my blacks just a little bit and I might wanna compensate that just by boosting the shadows overall or maybe even coming up to exposure and just bringing up the exposure of the entire image just a bit. I'm starting to really like that. The next step is this HSL panel. I actually really like this panel for landscapes. Basically what this does is it allows you to edit the hue, saturation, or luminance for specific colors. You can do it with the sliders and let me show you what that does. If I select the blue slider for hue, it changes the blue hue. So that's mostly the sky. So that's kind of cool. For saturation, it will just boost the saturation of the sky or of the blue. And then for luminance, this makes it brighter or darker. So that can actually add some more definition in the sky as well. You can also pinpoint a color in your photo to edit by clicking on this little button on the top left of each little edit. And say we want to do that with the saturation to, to the sky, we can just click and then drag up or down. And that selects the color, which actually includes some of that aqua slider as well. So we want a completely desaturated sky, we can do that. I'm gonna boost the sky just a little bit. I'm also probably going to drop down the luminance of the sky just to get a little bit more definition. It's kind of like adding a polarizer to the sky. Let's just see what the hue does, just for, <laughs> for kicks and giggles. It gets pretty unnatural when you start playing with the hue, but that can be kind of fun. I'm also going to play with the luminance of one of these orange rocks just to see what happens. That starts to get a little funky as well. These are all sliders that you can play around with and get really creative with. For landscapes, the next thing I do is go down to the detail panel, which is sharpening and noise reduction. If we zoom in on this photo, we can see that everything's pretty darn sharp. There's not too much noise. If this was shot at a higher ISO or in a darker environment, we might see that digital noise a little bit more. We can see a zoom in that shows the detail here. Sharpening, I'm not really going to sharpen this image much more. It already has a set amount of sharpening that's added. We also boosted the clarity, which added a little bit more sharpness as well. If we want, we can bring up this sharpening amount and then the detail and radius filters adjust how that sharpening is applied and how it affects the edges of things in your image. Moving these sliders around, you'll start to see bigger and smaller bits of grain because to increase the sharpness of your image, you will be getting more grain. To reduce that grain or to reduce any of the digital noise that you have initially, you can use this noise reduction slider. So if I bring this up, It'll be probably really hard to see on video, but if you're doing this on your own computer, you will be able to notice that some of that noise is reduced. Now, this kind of combats the sharpening by making things a little bit more washed out, a little bit softer. So there is a balancing act between sharpening and noise reduction that you have to play around with. Since this image is mostly of the sky, I'm actually gonna go back to that normal sharpening level. We don't need to sharpen much. Everything's really in focus. We used a high f-stop, a big aperture for this photo. So it looks pretty sharp already and adding grain with this sharpening to the sky is not something that I want to do. This photo is looking really good according to me anyways. <laughs> Hopefully you think it's looking better too. Again, we can press the backslash button. We can also click this button right here. It looks like a Y to see the before and after as well at the same time, which is super helpful to see. I like this view a lot. You can really see the detail on the colors of this image. If you wanna add style, the next step would to be go down to this effects tab and add a vignette. A lot of people do like adding a vignette. I try to stay away from vignetting too much. I know it can look kinda cool, but after editing thousands of photos over many, many years, I look back on a lot of my photos where I added these super dark vignettes 
and I wish I never added them. So be careful when adding a vignette. My advice is to really don't increase the amount too much, and then if you do add a vignette, just increase that feathering so it's very subtle. I'm gonna get rid of that vignette because I don't want one for this photo. And then lastly, just go back up and see if you need to make any tweaks to the exposure after you've made those adjustments. It might help to just play around with the exposure slider. And one thing we haven't done in this lesson is play around with our graduated filters and our adjustment brush. This is something we're gonna be going over in one of the next few lessons and some other cool tips and tricks that you can do in Lightroom. But I wanna start with the basics and really this is what I would do playing around with exposure, white balance, and your saturation and colors. Those are the main things that you can do to make your landscape photos look even better. So that's our process. In the next few lessons, we'll be going over some specific tools to make your landscape photos even better. And then following that, Will, Sam, and I will be taking our own photos and editing them and walking through our entire process from start to finish.